Señoras, señores, intentamos una conexión en directo con Londres. Gracias. No sabemos cómo sale, pero ¿quién está en el otro lado? Es tan significativo que vamos a intentar incluso a riesgo de meter la pata. ¿Se ve, Rob? ¿Se puede ver ya? Hi. Tenemos en Londres en este momento a Rob Hopkins, el creador... Rob is the uh, instigator of a network called Transition. He did a TED Talk in 2009. He went up on stage with a bottle of oil, petroleum, and he said, this is over, guys. We need to find something else on which to base our society. Rob, what happened after three years? How many transition Communities do you have in the world? Well, there are now transition groups in 34 countries around the world, and there are thousands of them. We've kind of lost count, really. It's gone off and viral all over the place, and, uh, and that's a really, really exciting thing to see. You know, we have uh, in somewhere like Japan, for example, there are two official transition initiatives, but we know there are at least 40, and the same is the case around the world. It's an idea that has gone viral. Why are you called transition? Where are you going? Where are you transitioning into? We are trying to transition away from our current oil-dependent way of doing things, which, uh, among many other impacts, has meant that the uh, Arctic ice uh, today has reached its lowest extent ever. Uh, absolutely disastrous uh, side effects of climate change caused by our, our addiction to fossil fuels. And uh, we argue that we need to see moving away from fossil fuels as an enormous opportunity for creativity, for entrepreneurship, for brilliance and playfulness, uh, rather than something that's absolutely terrible. So we are about to move away from oil dependency, high carbon living, to more local uh, and more resilient way of doing things. Um, you said resilience is a much more interesting concept than sustainability. What is resilience and why is so important? Resilience is the ability of something to withstand a shock. So when you get a shock, it doesn't just fall to pieces. And there was a football manager uh, here called, uh, who used to manage a football club team. And he used to say, uh, he used to describe resilience as bounce back ability, ability to bounce back again. And I think often sustainability tends to imply something that is sustainable over the long term. That's, there's much about sustainability, which is fantastic. But I think we're moving into times, whether it's because of the economic crisis, because of the energy crisis, because of climate change, when we'll have more shocks, more unexpected things. And so when we think about sustainability, we have to design in our ability to, to, to withstand shocks and move with the shock. Um, your idea is based on communities, of people working together. How do you defend this? in these moments of high individualism, egoism, consumism. How you make it work? Because it's more fun. Because what we... <laughs> it was an applause. Because, because we all love those moments in life when the little hairs on the back of our neck stand up, okay? whether it's when we fall in love the first time, when we see music, when we see the band that, that changes our life. And those moments, I think, well, my experience of doing transition for many people is that we have many of those experiences. When you, when you can taste the possibility of what we can create out of, the, out of this time. And so for me, rather than uh, to create a change we need to create in the world doesn't need to be something where we feel miserable all the time. It doesn't need to be something where we are, you know, it's, it's stressful pressure. I think it's about making it so 
join up those moments when the head stands up on the back of our neck. This should be a thrilling process. This is historically precedented opportunity to be brilliant and be creative. That's, uh, I think, that's what people are really excited about. Um, what are the typical activities that a transition community does? These people get together. They want to leave carbon fossils the way of their life. They want to go somewhere else. What do they do? Well, the first thing they do is they do what they decide they need to do, not what I tell them to do or somebody else tells them to do. Like it's a process where the solutions bubble up. So transition is different. Brazil, in Brixton, in Bologna, it's distinctly transition, but it's different. And then the initiative will set about as the best ways to make that place resilient. So for example, this is very people to see this is this is the Bristol Pound. This is the city still England, which next Wednesday launched this is the pound, a local currency uh, scheme for mm -mm. printed notes with a system where you can pay by tech, you can go shopping with your phone. Support local businesses. Other are starting energy company, and are starting local food project. Uh, it's 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 a flowering of activity from the that which is led by ordinary people. It can be as small as starting to grow some food, railway stick, and it as creating your own local company, becoming a becoming your own energy company. It's 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 up to you. You don't need permission. Just get started. Dice, eh, por esta parte que no se ha oído bien, dice, cada comunidad hace lo que quiere, no es él que le dice a las miles de comunidades transition cómo transitar a esta economía sin petróleo. Cada uno hace lo que quiere. Hay gente que coña, acuña una moneda propia, como esta que enseñaban ahí. Hay gente que busca maneras de crecer, de, 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 de crecer su propia comida. Hay gente que busca sistemas de consumo colaborativo. Y son todas diferentes. Una cosa es transición en Tokio, otra cosa es transición en Bolonia. Por tanto, no hay un modelo, pero todos son actividades basadas en la comunidad que se pone de acuerdo en hacer estas cosas. You said connection is not very good, but I continue. You talk a lot about. It doesn't matter. We are already enchanted. Um, you talk a lot about permaculture. In fact, you have a PhD in permaculture. What is that? ¿Qué es permacultura? If you go into a forest, into a, a, a native woodland, you don't see bags of fertilizer lying around in a forest. You don't need to water a forest. You don't need to weed a forest. A forest is a system that sustains itself. Uh, and, uh, with diversity and so on. And permaculture is about taking the observations about how something like a woodland functions, but applying that to economics, to agriculture. I think it's like a glue that when we talk about creating a transitioned, uh, more local, uh, resilient economy, we have all the different bits, the food, the energy, the economics. Permaculture is a design system. It's a design glue for a post-oil society. When we don't have oil to do all the things because we've designed everything so badly, uh, then we need better design, and permaculture is that system. Uh, do you never travel? Do you never take a plane to go anywhere? Uh, I, I take trains, but I don't fly. When I went to see An Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore's film in 2005, 2006, and I sat in the cinema and I watched that film, uh, and I thought, well, what can I do about this? I f that was the pledge that I made to myself, was I wasn't going to fly anymore. And uh, I haven't flown since, uh, and uh, so we try I tried to model that as an organization, transition is now happening in 34 countries around the world, but I, I don't fly around the world to do that. We do talks by Skype, we film DVDs and send out the DVDs, we do questions and answers, things like this on Skype, 
but we don't need to fly everywhere anymore. We have all this technology to, 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 to do that for us. So uh, I usually start when I do that. I, I didn't do it for today, but I usually start and I work out how much carbon dioxide I've saved by not flying to give that presentation in person. And sometimes it's been known to make a standing ovation in the place. You know? <laughs> um, uh, um, as far as I know, a, a representative, a coordinator, of Transition España is there with you. He is. Juan de Rio is correct. Can we see him for a moment? Oh. We have a question in Spanish for a Spaniard. Juan, ¿nos oyes? Te escucho bien, Antonella. Gracias. Cuéntanos cuál es la realidad. Transitions en España. ¿Hay algún país, ciudad, calle, barrio, en transición en España? Pues, bueno, hola, Madrid. Eh, pues sí, la verdad es que ahora mismo en España hay unos 25 grupos repartidos por todo el Estado. Así que sí, el movimiento está, es joven, Tres años, pero está avanzando, está avanzando para adelante y creciendo mucho. Vale. Eh, un ejemplo, ¿qué hay? Una Barcelona en transición, hay un Madrid en transición. ¿Dónde están estos grupos? Si alguna de las personas en la sala quiere ir a ver qué hacen, ¿dónde va? Bien, nos explico. Eh, un grupo en Barcelona, en Barcelona en transición, en Madrid mismo se está creando un grupo y en Zalejo hay otro grupo. ¿En Andalucía hay bastantes grupos? En en Mijas, en Jerez. La comunidad se acaba de usar la Gracias, Juan. Eh, te invitaremos a este escenario para que lo digas en vivo. Rob. We thank you so much to make time to do this conference. We send you a ovation. <laughs> Rob, we thank you so much for having made time to be here with us, even if only in a screen. Thank you very much from Madrid.